My name is Mario Batali, and this is Molto Mario. I'm here with my good friends Raina Craig and Mary Beth, and today we're talking about Italian cooking, more specifically, the beautiful cooking of Sicily. And if you've ever been to Sicily, you'll notice that there's a plethora of fry shops, what they call frigitorie. Frigitorie is a beautiful word. It involves snacking pretty much any of the time of the day. What it means is that they're cooking all of these beautiful things fried and then they just put them up on the banquet and people come in and order them, pick them up, take them home, eat them on the spot, have their little sandwiches there. They make everything from fried panelli, the chickpea fritters, to fried vegetables, to fried seafood. The whole thing is an exquisite expression of the southern Italian culture as it mostly exemplified by the beautiful island of Sicily, but the probably the king <laughs> ingredient, the most important thing, the capolavoro, <laughs> Beethoven's ninth or eighth or fifth, is arancini. These beautiful fried rice balls are exactly everything that you want to talk about when you're talking about Sicilian culture and Sicilian food, and they are easy to make, fun to make, so much that you can get the whole family involved. So, being rice balls, the first thing we have to make or deal with is something called rice. We're using short grain rice. This is the same arboreal rice that they use in the north to make all of their risotti. And in fact, when the Arabs brought rice and first introduced it to the Sicilian culture in the 8th or 9th century, it was actually cultivated there up until the middle of the 18th century. And what happened, for some reason, and we do not know, is it dried up a little bit in Sicily because when you're cultivating rice, you really need to have a wet, kind of a, a boggy ground where the rice paddies can float. And then when you harvest it, they go in and they actually knead through the water and pick all the rice out. At this point, Sicily is somewhat arid, and there's absolutely no more culture of growing rice. That doesn't mean that they can't eat it, though, and in fact, there's still a huge rice culture in Sicily, although not so much anymore about the risotto. It's more about these rice balls, and then also using it in something called timbalo di riso. Mario, can you use uh, long grain or medium grain rice? Absolutely, and the most okay. important thing to realize in this case is that probably the rice that you're going to use for these kind of things, and the way that this dish was probably born, was using leftover rice. Oh. That they didn't actually make rice for it, although we're going to do that right now. Like now I've got some, huh? lefto Leftover risotto. Leftover risotto, leftover pilaf, before, whatever right. you have leftover from the night before, you'll, you'll do just like we're about to do here, that is to say, mix it up with something, put something inside of it, and then just make it delicious. But if you didn't have any leftover rice, <laughs> And in fact, right now we don't. We're going to make risotto in the very traditional way. I have a brown chicken stock here. You could just as easily use vegetable stock. You could use water. You could use veal stock. The key in this case is that we're going to use a little bit of saffron. So I take, I've taken about a teaspoon of saffron and I've stirred it into this to kind of create a chicken stock and saffron tea. Now, in making risotto, you want to make sure that you do the first step is to put it in with your lipid of choice. In this case, we've used butter, but often enough, I just might as easily use olive oil. And I'm toasting it. This is called rosolare. And it's the key step in making great risotto in that it's going to allow the rice to maintain its own individual kernels while still giving up that kind of creamy texture that we love in good risotto. So I've done that for a minute. Now I start adding the broth. And as I said before, you could just as easily use water or vegetable sauce or tomato juice, whatever it is you want. If you want to go out on the edge, you could That's even do it with really like fruit juice. Yeah, this is when you really brown the bones. Brown and I like bone. the depth of that flavor. Now, <clears throat> although I'm not a real stock head anyway. Right. Now, I'm going to cook that and I'm going to cook it just <laughs> like risotto by adding just a little bit more of the broth as it goes down below the shoulders of the rice itself. The next thing I'm going to make is the ragu. Now, there's three different arancine that we're going to make in this show. The first one we're going to make is one based on leftover meat sauce. And in fact, they traditionally might not even make this to order, they would have this leftover from another meal, and it's just the Sicilian take on the ragu bolognese. Every town, every region, every part of Italy has their own little meat sauce. What ingredients it involves depends entirely on where you are. And today we're gonna start with a little sofrito of carrots and onions, no celery as is traditional to Emilia Romagna. And we're just gonna chop the carrots up super, super fine. What is sofrito? Sofrito is the, the starting of the building blocks of many dishes. And it's generally sautéed carrots, celery, and onions. And that's the beginning of uh, any one of a thousand dishes. And that's the word they use in Italian as well as in Spanish to describe this stuff right okay. here. I think they call it mirepoix well, in French. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's so we're not going we're into not the going French <laughs> So now my risotto is cooking away, or my rice, as it were. And it could be, again, as we said, the long grain or... Any one of a thousand brands you'll find on the grocery store. 
And the key how long to do you this dish... How long do you toast the um, rice one before you just add Just a minute stock? or two until it all of a sudden turns really opaque. Okay, you can okay. tell. Suddenly it doesn't look any more... Well, there's not much left. Now, here it is. It starts to look... As opposed to, you can see kind of those little clear bits on the outside. Yep. Right. It, all of a sudden, the whole thing looks completely okay. Now, in making my little ragu here, I'm going to add a touch of sugar, which is very Sicilian. They love the concept and the flavor of sugar and sour, sweet and sour, sweet and acidic, anything that they can get a little sugar in. Ever since the Arabs introduced cane sugar, at the same time they introduced rice in the 8th or the 9th century, they've had a particularly long love affair with sugar itself. Now, we're going to take this estrato, this tomato paste, which they... First of all, puree and cook all these tomatoes down, then they allow it to dry on these giant wooden or terracotta plaques in the sun. So they're even sun drying their tomato paste. And we're going to just stir that through and allow that to rust for a minute. Then we're going to take our meat and a rind of cheese. This is very traditional you know, Sicilian. Because it's going to add a certain amount of lactic taste. And when you think about the way that they make regu bolognese, they actually put milk in it. So there's kind of a reason for that to be in there. And it, it adds just another component of flavor, another building block on top of which the flavor can really s allow itself to come through. We're going to add you don't, ground. You don't, you don't shred it up or slice it up. You just throw it in the, the meat. Sauce. Well, no, it's already no, ground. No, no, the cheese. Oh, the cheese. No, it's just that piece. Oh. Just that, piece. that whole piece. And I'm going to eventually fish it out. Right. Oh. So it's going to add a little, fl a little nuance, a little flavor, but not that much. Yeah. Now I'm adding ground veal, but it might just as easily be ground lamb in Sicily or ground beef. And I'm going to toss it through like that. Then I'm going to add a little bit of liquid, and we're going to bring the whole thing to the boil. When it comes up to the boil, I'm going to lower the heat <clears throat> and simmer it for about an hour. In which case, then I have a very quick ragu. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we deal with the risotto, deal with the ragu, and we're going to get down and get funky with some modern cheese. So please, stay with us. As you can see, I've got my beautiful ragu. It's cooked, it's simmered, we've allowed it to cool. I've got my risotto rice cooked. The liquid is completely removed from it. We haven't tried to maintain it or mantecare by adding any cheese or extra broth at the last second or butter. Now what we're gonna do to the cooled rice is add two whole eggs and a touch of salt and just stir that through. Now this could be the basis of a thousand rice balls. You could make millions of ideas from here. You're only limited by your rice imagination. And the trick here is to understand that you want to be able to seal whatever it is. And you may find that they're actually just plain sometimes. They'll just make arancini with dirizo of rice. And you'll find that they're just fried balls. But we're not going to go there. We're going to make them together. So each one of us is going to, that's right, roll up your sleeves, Greg. Exactly what I'm it looks doing. like we're getting serious. Exactly. Here's a little plunder of rice. And then another for you. And there we go. And then I'll do one right over here. The trick here is to figure out what you're going to put in it. In this case, we're going to put a little ragu. So here, what you want to do is flatten it out like that. Right? Keeping it as whole as you can. I'll keep the side towels over here. You guys just don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Then you want to put in enough ragu. And again, it's all about balance. Just like in raviolis, just like in spaghetti, just like in any kind of addition Italian cooking. They wouldn't want... More is not necessarily better. Yeah. It's okay to have just the right amount. Go ahead and each add your own amount of what you think should be right. But just, here's the lesson. This is the right one. That's the right <laughs> That's amount. That's about the right amount. You don't want to go much further than that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take either your butter knife that you have there on the side, and you're just going to slip it under like so, right? You're going to have to, you know, we need these before the 22nd. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. All right. That's how we do it in the kitchen at the restaurant. That's very nice. I applaud your thoroughness. Yeah, right, right. But can we make a couple more, a couple more quickly? So then what you want to do is you want to slide your hand under like this, right? And don't worry. It doesn't have to be a complete sheet because now, because we're blessed with our perfect opposing thumb here. Oh, We're going to close this. It's all right. You're just going to form it. You know what? I'm just, you put too much anyway. ragu in there, didn't you? Yeah. He got a little ugly in the ragu yeah. department. Well, just like it had to be a meatball, That's right. Make a meatball, but make sure that if, if it's too 
If there's ragu yeah, sticking on the outside, look yeah. at that. That's not gonna work. <laughs> look at that. All right, well, you're yeah, supposed to be a good <laughs> shot. Here's what I we were hoping you. it would look like, like right? Like right in here, That's right, exactly. Yes. Perfect. I got it. Look at that mess I've got. Come on, now, Shaggy. Here's the poster child for an arancino that needs help. So then what we're going to do is we're going to dredge them in a little bit of egg white and a little bit of fresh <laughs> breadcrumbs. <laughs> Penalty box for Craig. <laughs> Sorry. Can you do That's me a right. favor and quit laughing? I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm the only one well, you're laughing, laughing with Drop me. it in. I'll, I'll dredge. Okay. We're good. We're good. Drop it in. And these are pretty nice size. These are bigger than your uh, regular Average. size. <laughs> Um, you're not taking mine? I'm going to take yours. <laughs> I'm going to take good. yours to the hospital. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Now, the trick here is just to drop them in your beautiful extra virgin olive oil. When you're frying at home, the, only, the most important thing is the choice of lipid. You want to use extra virgin olive oil if you can, but peanut oil smokes at a little bit higher temperature, so you have to worry a little bit less about that. What temperature do you heat the oil to? You want to heat it to anywhere between 360 and 380. Okay. But, you know, if you're going to add some stuff, you're going to see that the temperature is going to lower Correct. as we drop the things into it. So I'm going to drop the three good ones in. Go ahead. <laughs> and stand me yours. No, I'm going to show you. It's going to work. It's going to work. Watch this. This just goes to show you that it doesn't have to be all Perfect. so darn exact. Yeah. You're the, you're this the whole one who's thing. always telling me. Exactly. You know, just make it any way you make want. Make it any way you want. And you watch. Yours is exactly. probably going to turn so out to be the smart. new way they do it in exactly. Sicily. <laughs> hey, I saw that American guy with a fabulous <laughs> blouse on the other day. <laughs> <laughs> he, he created the most amazing Stop. innovation. <laughs> Stop. All right. All right. So now we dust off our fingers and we prepare for the second ones. Now the next ones <laughs> are going to have another traditional filling. We're we're going to allow the rice to be as it is for right now, but the filling takes red onions and anchovies or sardines. Canned anchovies are absolutely acceptable. I like to buy the salted ones and then rinse them off. But the key first is to add something that's going to bring even a little bit more sweetness to it. Why that's do you like the salted ones? The salted ones seem to me to taste a little bit more like the real fish okay. as opposed to the ones in the can. The can sure. tends to taste a little bit like old oil. Uh, right. And that's not bad. I mean, you know, I think the reason that Americans are afraid of anchovies is because they've had bad ones at pizzerias all this time. Yeah, and there's not much they can do to help themselves but to think bad things about it because right. it's just this salt mm -hmm. pit. Right. But the ones that are salted, when you rinse them and soak them in a little bit of milk or a little bit of water, they taste delicious. Cool. And you're going to think to yourself, gee, that doesn't taste as bad as I expected. And in fact, in the right amount, sometimes you don't even notice that it's really that fishy. It's kind of like that fish sauce that they use in Thai cooking, that right. non-plus right. stuff. Right. If you smell it, it smells like a, a, a rotting graveyard of fish. But if you use the right amount of salad, <laughs> right. it's absolutely perfect. And that's really what that's all about. Now, I have some more rice that I cooked, cooled. And I'm going to add two eggs. Did you cook that rice the same way as the last? Exactly the, the same way, but I cooked it just a little bit less. And you okay. can see that it looks like there are separated... The granules are a little sticky. bit more separate. It's not so sticky. So I didn't cook it all the way down to the way it was. But I have allowed it to cool because you don't want to add anything like this to it. You're just putting the yolks cool. in there? Like I put that? in two whole eggs, two yolks, and a cup of grated pecorino. I'm going to stir that around. When we come back, I'll show you how we bring that together, as well as this beautiful anchovy onion combo, and we'll be able to taste our beautiful arancini, including the new one. So please, stay with us. Welcome back. Now our arancini. Let's see if we can just tell which one the artist made. <laughs> Quite frankly, you really can't, can no, you? you can't. No. Doesn't that just no, go to show? Yep. Individual interpretation is exactly what it should be. It's actually this one here, but yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It's really nothing to worry about. I don't think actually, you know what? I want to eat that one. No, no, I want. I'm yeah. going to have that one. Okay. You guys go ahead and split these up. Wow. And now we're going to go into Thank you. our next and we have still two more delicious rice concepts to go with here the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of basic tomato sauce to that anchovy and onion concoction that i made but not too much i'm adding it cool so that i can work with this and then i'm going to take the rice that i mix with the two yolks and the two whole eggs right. eat them guys they're going to be smoking right, hot right, be right, careful right. very hot very hot <laughs> so now i've got this <laughs> and it's going to be bound together by the same kind of idea. And I'm going to create two here. And instead of actually putting it on the counter, 
the way they often might work. And when you go by these little frigitoria in the morning, you see this army of ladies, you know, anywhere from 20 to 70. And their hands are just so well trained. They move so quickly. It's, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pinch of that mm. anchovy stuff right out of the pan. Yum. Wow. Mm. And just fold it around like so with another little blop like that. And then, adding a little bit more rice, form the ball. And I learned mm. this from my good friend Craig over here. <laughs> See? You notice my sleeves are rolled They're down They're back now. down and you're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing to realize is that you wouldn't want to have too little rice. You don't need to worry about it challenging the integrity of the wall of the actual rice ball. You want to make sure that you get them going. So I'm going to fry only one of these so we can see Yum. how it is. But you could make as many as you want. I'm going to do a little flour. What kind of breadcrumbs are those? These are fresh breadcrumbs. We take whatever bread we have, we grind it up in the food processor, and then if you want them to get really dark, dark and toasty, then we'll just uh, toss them in the toaster oven or in the oven on a cookie sheet. But in this case, we didn't. These are just fresh crumbs, oh, and I good. love those. No herbs in the crumbs? No herbs, no. never. I never add anything to them unless I'm going to use it for something specific. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop that one in. And now the third arancini in the arancini variations that were made. Arancine, sorry, not arancini, is the, uh, the sweet one. So we're going to take our boil rice. We're going to toss it in a pan. We're going to take the zest, so carefully carved from an orange. Toss that in there. We're going to take water and we're going to cover it by more than double. We're bringing it up to a boil. We're going to lower the heat. We're going to simmer it for 25 minutes until it's fully cooked through. Then we're going to dump it into a plate and it's going to look like this. We flatten it out because we want it to be able to cool as quickly as possible. The whole idea when you're using rice is if you're going to control the temperature and everything, get it all cooked properly, then when you want it to cool, you flatten it out. If you left it in a big pot just like it was, it would eventually become one big giant ball. All right. That's all right, as you've shown us, but <laughs> not yeah. necessarily. But not really By the way, it's still sitting going. right there. It is. It is it's, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. Yeah. I can't wait to have a snack later. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now we've got our rice, and what you want to do is pull that orange peel out, although you don't have to, because the orange peel, just like the toothpick in many other dishes, the people with more orange peel when they're snacking get to do the, get dishes. To do the dishes. But in this case, it would actually challenge the dish, because if you bit into this nice, snowy mass of beautifully sweetened rice, it would be a disaster if you had a mouthful. So the orange sweetens it? Is that what the orange means? gives a delicate sweetness to it and works out really well, but it also gives it, it kind of a little it. acidic structure. Now we're going to take ricotta. Fresh ricotta, and you already know this is going to be good. I heard him take a breath. <gasps> oh, ricotta, <laughs> so right. And then a so little bit right. of flour, <laughs> a little bit of flour, and we're going to stir that through. And we want to make sure we get all that orange out. And then I'm going to take a half cup of milk, and I'm going to stir that through. And then at this point, we're not necessarily going to make them into balls. We're going to actually make them into funny little shapes. Which, for a chef guy like me, doesn't take too much to do. I think just about everything's funny. <laughs> but we're not going to dredge them in any of this. This is going to go right into the uh, fryer, the frying oil, just as it is. And the simple way to do that is to grab yourself a couple of spoons. Actually, we'll take a big one like this. And you want to get the savory out. This is the one with the anchovies. Oh, yeah. Mm and drop him out. Now, using the oil for sweet and savory is something that is entirely acceptable in Italy. And you want to you understand that that's all right to do. What am I looking for? There's my knife right there. To this, I'm going to add just the juice. It won't affect the flavor at all? Not necessarily. It might a little bit, but as long as you're cooking and cleaning as you go, it's going to be in good shape. I'm going to add the juice of one orange here now. And that's really almost the entire sweetening component of this. These are not really desserty, although they are desserty, because I'm going to drizzle them with a really beautiful honey thing that I'm going to make when we come back. But let me get a couple of these in there so that we can taste them. And the way that you do that is you just take the spoon like so, bring it to the oil, and then drop it in. Same here again. When we come back, I'll show you how we finish these sweet little fritters up. So please, stay with us.
Welcome back. Now we're just going to caramelize a touch of honey here with the tiniest little bit of water to serve with those. But first we have to carve our beautiful sardine fritter, or anchovy, I'm sorry. And look at that. Wow. Oh, unctuous is the word we're looking for here. Go ahead and pass it around there, okay? Yeah. Now, we've got our little honey thing going here. We added the water so that it wouldn't caramelize so quickly. Okay. But if you just added it plain without any of the water at all and watched it carefully, what we're looking to do is to kind of cook this into a deeper, richer caramel. So now we're going to take our little rice fritelle out, which again, aren't that sweet. This is really kind of a savory dessert. It's more based on the bounty of that beautiful ricotta. Mm. Then we're going to take them to our fancy little silver platter chalice-like, as it were. We're going to take our honey, and this is just like they do for struffoli, is you just kind of drizzle it over like that, which makes it incendiarily hot to your mouth. But when it kind of sets and cools a little bit, it becomes something so cool, so delicious, so magnificent. Such a good way to do it. Then, of course, we spank just the tiniest touch of cinnamon over it, and then we spank like a madman the sugar <laughs> over the top. Hey, hey, and there we have it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being here. You made it a lot of fun. I want to thank you guys for being here, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Molto Mar. Ciao.